Hi everyone, welcome to July Books. We just had a big monsoon blow through here. You might hear some residual thunder. Hopefully it won't be too distracting with weather and blowing in the background and the lighting will be okay. So let's jump in. As always, I've got some great books for you. And the first one is a thriller and it's by Sarah Pekinen and it's called Gone Tonight. It is about Catherine Sterling and her mother, Ruth Sterling. Ruth is very protective of her daughter. Catherine works in a um, memory care facility. Ruth wants the best for her daughter, but there is definitely things going on that you have to read the book to figure out. Catherine thinks she knows her mother, Ruth, but she's finding things out and realizes how little she knows her mother. This is told somewhat through flashbacks of Ruth when she was a young girl, and I'll tell you just a little bit. She, due to certain circumstances, she had to leave her hometown and started a brand new life. And Catherine wants to know more about her mother's background, and her mother does not want to share. She also, Catherine, realizes her mother is keeping things from her or portraying things differently than they really are. And I don't want to say too much, but both of them are finding things out about the other one. And it's very interesting, very well done. I've read other Sarah Pekinen, some with Greer Hendrix, where they co-wrote, and then some where Sarah Pekinen wrote by herself. I really enjoy her thriller writing style and it's just, one of those fun mysteries that keeps you on the edge of your seat. I thought this one was really well done. There was one scene in there that made me quite uncomfortable and, well, a couple of scenes, but it's, I think, needed for the storyline of the book. It wasn't gratuitous, I didn't feel. It made me extremely uncomfortable, though, so be careful of that if, you know, you are subject to things bothering you. But I thought that it was a really, really well done book, and I do enjoy her as an author. Another one that I enjoyed is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I really enjoyed this. This is told from different perspectives. Alex Summer is a famous woman who's a podcaster, and some of it's told through her podcasts. She goes to a restaurant and is celebrating with her friends and family, goes to the bathroom, and sorry, when I say celebrating, she was celebrating her birthday, goes to the bathroom, and a woman introduces herself as Josie and says, it's my birthday too today. And they compare the years. They were both born on the exact same day, same year. So Josie says, we're birthday twins. I think it was the next day that Josie shows up where Alex's children go to school. And she says, hey, remember me? I'm your birthday twin. And she says, I actually have an idea for your podcast. And Josie starts going to Alex's filming studio, which is in her home to film this idea for the podcast. Well, then things unfold in Josie's life. Alex gets pulled in and there's a lot of uh, blurring of the lines, lack of boundaries. You know, Alex is in, involved in Josie's life much more than she wants to be. It's very well told and I loved the podcast angle and some of this as you find out what happens, it goes back and plays some of the podcasts between Alex and Josie. And you just have this sense of foreboding all throughout. You know it's not going to end well, but it's a car accident. You just have to look. And I really thoroughly enjoyed this. If you can, get it on audio. The accents are very well done. I just thought it was a really fun thriller mystery. This next one was one that Mark and I listened to in the car on our driving back and forth between homes 
and it is called Killing the Mob by Bill O'Reilly. It was interesting. I think Mark enjoyed it more than I did. It is so many different mobsters. Some is little snippets, some is longer, and it's all about how the mob came to power and had a lot of control over certain politicians and blackmailed the Kennedy family because the Kennedy family gave them a lot to blackmail them over. <laughs> um, just so many things that unfolded and how the FBI caught some of the mobsters, how they ended up going to jail, some of the gruesome killings. It was interesting. That being said, it went on a little longer than I wanted. I think Mark found it more fascinating, like I said, than I did. I do enjoy Bill O'Reilly's books, though, and I think we would definitely read more. This was just, the topic was, I felt like he maybe milked a little more out of the topic than what it warranted, is maybe how I felt, but it was really good, and I like it when Mark enjoys a book, so that made it good for me. So this is another thriller. Work was so heavy, I just needed some escapes. And Hush Little Baby was a great escape. I think it starts off fairly early in the book saying, if I stay, he'll kill me. If I leave, he'll kill the children. You find out very early on that they have an abusive marriage. So her name is Jillian, his name is Kane. He's a police officer. That makes it, makes it extremely difficult for her to leave or get help or turn against him. She has a lot of bruises. She wears long sleeves a lot and she has two children. He's wonderful father to them, but he's not a good husband. And when she decides to leave, he is extremely manipulative and looks like he's going to get the children and she has to outsmart him and it's a game of cat and mouse. It is very interesting how she plays the cards that she has to try to get the children and how things unfold in court, things that happen, I really thought it was good. Lots of twists and turns with so many different things in it. It was just a really, really good book. So that's one that I would definitely recommend as long as the abuse part doesn't bother you. But I think it was very well done. The, most of the more graphic abuse was early in the book, very early, to kind of set the stage for what was coming so you knew. But how her parents get involved, the children, friends, neighbors, all different things in trying to get herself out and get her children as well. It was really, really well done. So if that interests you, I would definitely recommend it. And then the last book was a Christian book that I think most of you have read. Comment down below if you've read The Hiding Place by Corrie Ten Boom. I read this as a child. It has been so many years, and I think no matter whether you're Christian or not, this is a worthwhile read about how people chose, Corrie ten Boom and her family chose to step out and help the Jews during World War II, and the price that they paid for that, and they were unapologetic. It was amazing to me how strong they were they almost didn't even try to hide what they were doing because they knew it was right. And they were going to do what they were going to do and they were not going to apologize for it. It was astounding what they were able to do in helping so many Jews. In case you don't know, it is a true story. And it's just incredible, their faith, particularly Corey's sister, she astounded me on so many occasions. This Dutch family, what they went through was amazing. Um, I don't want to say too much in case you haven't read it and want to read it, but Corey's sister, Betsy. Oh, to have just a thimble full of her faith. When 
they caught someone who turned them in to the German police and they found out who this was and it was somebody they thought was a friend. Betsy said, oh, I'm so sad for him. I'll pray for him. I'm like, wow, what an amazing outlook. And to know whatever happened, it's in the Lord's hands. It's not worth worrying about. It's not worth fretting over. They just did what they needed to do. And I just, I teared up at many points in the book. And it really, really touched me. I thought it was very, very well done. What an amazing life that Corey had. And her outlook and her attitude and her spirit. It just, and the number of lives that she touched. Oh, to be like that. That would just be amazing. So if you've ever read that book, let me know. I just, I don't remember much of it from when I read it as a child. And I'm so glad I picked it up and reread it. So that was all of my books for July. Let me know if you've read any good books. I've got a bunch that I'm really excited about for August. And if I need to add any to my queue, please let me know below. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I always appreciate it. And I hope you're having an amazing day and finding time for some great books. Love to you all.